untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Green Life Gain Sacrifice deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Dina Soulsteeper as her commander. The 1 3 Legendary Dryad Druid says whenever we gain life, each opponent loses one life, can also pay one mana and sacrifice another creature, and then Dina gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is the sacrifice creature's power, although we won't be using that ability too often. So our deck is going to feature tons of sacrifice fodder, meaning cheap creatures we don't mind sacrificing because they provide some sort of advantage when they die or enter the battlefield. Then we're going to have some sacrifice engines, card draw engines that maybe benefit of creatures dying, a little bit of ramp and a ton of removal as well. So let's dive right into it, starting out with our one drops, where we have Cursebound Witch, a 1-2 that when it dies lets us draft a card from its spellbook, which also features a ton of sacrifice synergy. We've got Persistent Specimen, which we can return from our graveyard to the battlefield so we can keep sacrificing it. Serrated Scorpion drains the opponent for 2 when it dies. Valentin has the flexibility of being played as Lisette for 4 mana, in which case whenever we gain life we can pay 1 mana to put plus 1 counters on the entire team and give them Trample until end of turn. And Valentin can also synergize nicely with Dina. And then Ravenous Quirrell picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever we sacrifice an artifact or a creature, and for three mana we can sacrifice another artifact or a creature to gain one life and draw a card, which also plays well with Dina. At two mana we've got Blood Artist as one of the drain engines that will drain the opponent whenever a creature dies. We've got Carrier Thrall, a 2-1 that when it dies leaves behind an Eldrazi Scion token, which we can also sacrifice to add colorless mana to our mana pool. Doomed Dissenter leaves behind a 2-2 zombie when he dies. Got the Dusk Legion Zealot that draws a card at the cost of one life when it enters. Ors of Enforcer, a 1-2 with Death Touch and Afterlife 1, so when it dies it leaves behind a Flying Spirit token. We've got Priest of Forgotten Gods, which can tap to sacrifice two other creatures, and then any number of opponents has to lose two life, sacrifice a creature, and we add double black to our mana pool and draw a card, so we can use that mana to maybe get back a reassembling skeleton from our graveyard, so we can keep sacrificing it over and over again. Volt Scourge is more of a 1-drop, since we can pay 1 mana and 2 life to cast it, and then it's a 1-1 one -one flyer with lifelink, so also great synergy with Dina. We've got the Prosperous Innkeeper, which makes a treasure when it enters a battlefield to help us ramp, and whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control we also gain one life to maybe drain the opponent with Dina. At 3 mana, Callous Blood Mage can enter to make a 1-1 one -one pest token that when it dies gains one life if we need more sacrifice fodder, or we can draw a card at the cost of one life or exile the graveyard. Felstinger has Exploit, so when it enters we can sacrifice a creature to draw two cards at the cost of two life, can even target the opponent with it, and then a nice 3-2 with Death Touch. Midnight Reaper says whenever a non-token creature we control dies, it deals one damage to us and we draw a card. Morbid Opportunist says whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card, and only triggers once each turn. Playcrafter can enter to make each player sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, and if the opponent cannot, they have to discard a card instead. Vito says whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life, which can also end up with Dina. Wastrider, a 3-2 that can be a nice sacrifice engine, as we can sacrifice another creature at any time to scry one without having to pay any cost, and when it enters it is also joined by an 0-1 goat token, can also be escaped out of our graveyard. We've got Murderous Rider, which can destroy a creature or planeswalker with the adventure, and then a 2-3 lifelinker afterwards. And Ayara is triple black, so not the easiest to cast, but as you may have noticed our deck is mainly black with just a splash of green, so we can still support a turn 3 Ayara. And then it's a great card, because when Ayara or another black creature enters a battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life, can also tap to sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. Then Reclamation Sage, one of the few green creatures, as when it enters it can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Then at 4 mana, Henrika can also be a nice sacrifice engine, making each player sacrifice a creature, can draw a card at the cost of one life, and eventually transform into the Infernal Seer, which is a nice 3-4 flying Death Touch lifelinker that can maybe pump our creatures. We've got Rankle, another sacrifice engine, that when it hits the opponent can make each player sacrifice a creature, or draw a card at the cost of one life, or discard a card. And then Yawkmoth can also sacrifice creatures by paying one life, and then we get to put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card, and can also discard a card to proliferate and maybe add more minus one counters to the opposing creatures, and has protection from humans. 
and then Solemn can ramp when it enters and draw a card when it dies, so we also don't mind sacrificing it. And then at 5 mana, Witch of the Moors, a 4-4 with Death Touch, saying at the beginning of your end step, if you gained life this turn, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and we get to return up to one target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. And Cavalier of Night enters, sacrificing one of our creatures to destroy an opposing creature on a 4-5 lifelinker, and when it dies it also returns a creature with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then topping off our creature curve, Belladros Witherbloom, 7 mana is quite expensive, but the ability is quite synergistic in our deck, making a 1-1 pest token at the beginning of each upkeep, including the opponent's upkeep, then a 4-4 flyer that can also pay 10 life to untap all lands we control, so we can maybe double up our mana. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, at 1 mana we've got Cling to Dust as Graveyard Hate that can also gain life in a pinch, we've got Village Rites to sack a creature and draw two. Fountain of Renewal will gain one life at the beginning of our upkeep to enable our life gain synergies. Witches Oven can sacrifice a creature to make a food token without having to spend any additional mana, and then we can sack those food tokens to gain life, maybe enable some synergies. And then at 2 mana, Deadly Dispute can sack a creature to draw 2 and make a treasure. Feed the Swarm as removal can also deal with enchantments. Heartless Act is removal at instant speed. Sanctum will drain the opponent for 1, so it also enables our life gain synergies. Arcane Signet for ramp. And then Meat Hook Massacre, an awesome sweeper that will stick around and also drain the opponent when our creatures die. At 3 mana, there's Bastion of Remembrance, which will also drain the opponent when our creatures die, makes a 1-1 token when it enters. Grim Tutor can find any card in our deck at the cost of 3 life, and the reason we're playing Grim Tutor is because we have an infinite combo in our deck that plays with our commander, which is at 5 mana, Exquisite Blood, an enchantment saying, whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. So if we have both Exquisite Blood and D9 play, as long as we can deal damage to the opponent, we will trigger the Exquisite Blood, gain life, which triggers Dina, dealing one damage to the opponent, which once again triggers Exquisite Blood, and that's basically an infinite combo that will win the game on the spot if uninterrupted. Then we also have Phyrexian Arena to draw an extra card at the cost of one life. Sanguine Brushstroke from Alchemy makes a Blood Artist and gives us a Blood Token, saying whenever we sacrifice a Blood Token each opponent loses one life. Bontus Monument makes our black creatures one cheaper, and whenever we cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. We've got Agadim's Awakening that can be played as a land, or as a way to get back a bunch of creatures from our graveyard. And then Hagar Mauling can also be played as a tap land or a 4 mana removal spell. We've got Soren making 2-3 lifelinking flying vampire tokens, or can provide card advantage with E plus 1. Binding and Death Sprout are removal spells that can also ramp us. Vraska can destroy no land permanents with mana value 3 or less, can also sacrifice another permanent to gain one life and draw a card, so a ton of synergy there too. And Mortality Spear can be cast for just 2 mana if we gained life this turn to destroy target no land permanent. And then at 5 mana, besides Exquisite Blood, we've got Spider Queen, making a bunch of spiders, gains additional loyalty when our creatures die, and can provide card advantage. And Moldervine Reclamation says whenever a creature we control dies, we gain one life and draw a card, so a ton of synergy there too. And then topping off her curve, got a few powerful planeswalkers with Liliana Dreadhor General, saying whenever a creature we control dies, draw a card, can make zombies or make each player sacrifice two creatures. We've got Garruk, Cursed Huntsman, can make two wolf tokens with the zero ability, and when those wolf tokens die, we get to add loyalty to Garruk to maybe get to the minus six ultimate, which can make us an emblem, saying creatures we control get plus three plus three and have trample permanently, and then the minus three can also destroy a creature and draw card. And finally, we've got Bolas the Citadel as a powerful card draw engine that lets us play off the top in exchange for our life total, and we can hopefully make up for it with all the life gain synergies in the deck, and then can eventually also sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to make the opponent lose 10 life, which can also be game winning. And then our mana base, there's no real need for snow lands in the deck, but we do have some utility lands with Phyrexian Tower, which can sacrifice a creature to add 2 mana, which can be a powerful way of ramping, and then Hive as a creature land, as well as Castle as a nice card draw engine, and then just a ton of mana fixing to make sure we can cast cards like Ayara on curve, while still having enough green mana for our other spells. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Athreos Shroud Veiled, and uh, our hand is missing some sort of card draw engine to go with the cheap sacrifice fodder, but I'll give it a try. Turn 1, play Specimen. 
And then turn to Signet plus Scorpion seems fine. And then we're waiting for some 4-mana creature or other Karndor effect. Alright, Priest could be nice. So we'll head for 2. Play D9 Priest. Seems like our opponent does have some removal up here. But doesn't fire it off just yet. 3 mana for a Morbid Opportunist. That's going to die to our Priest. And then might as well play Veto first to get the extra damage from Serrated Scorpion. And then we can use the extra mana to get back our Specimen from the Graveyard. Seems better than playing Doom the Center. And hit for one. Could see a Sweeper here at four mana. Not just a Revenge of Ravens. That's not too much of a problem since we don't need to attack to drain the opponent. A Ravenous Squirrel's nice too. So play these two. Activate Priests. Just to drain the opponent. And a Bastion of Remembrance seems awesome. So... Can maybe get that down now, in case of a sweeper. And then no attacks. Next turn can get back specimen. Alright, opponent does have the Kaya's Wrath, unfortunately, but still gonna deal quite a bit of damage here. Any reason to sack something to Dina? I don't think so. Opponent's at 6, so we're gonna play Dina first and then play a Jungle Hollow. Opponent's at 5. Feed the Swarm could also destroy the Revenge if needed. Opponent just developing their mana. Triumph kills Dina, but triggers Bastion. And Ayara seems nice. Can play Ayara into Specimen. Make sure to drain the opponents. They're at two. If they kill my two creatures without exiling, they die. If they let me untap, they probably die. Intervention to gain a ton of life. Alright, I guess that works. Put them back up to 14. So now, what's the play? I could feed the Swarm, destroy Revenge of Ravens to attack, and then maybe sacrifice Specimen, play a Sanctum. Seems fine. Ooh, a Midnight Reaper is good too. So, probably play the Midnight Reaper first. And then next turn, getting back Specimen, sacking it to Ayara, will also draw a card with Reaper. Athreos can put a counter on my permanence to eventually steal them when they die. Okay. So, Midnight Reaper probably attacks. And then play Specimen, can sacrifice Specimen. Could do it twice. She also drains with Ayara. Full Scourge I could play for one mana. And yeah, we'll hit for three. And then... Probably still better off going Sanctum plus Volt Scourge, keep Specimen in the graveyard. 
and then can play it for one mana and two life and play tap lands and then maybe next turn we can replay Dina as well so our opponent's back to five filigree gains two back up to seven and solemn for ramp but we again don't really need to attack our opponents to kill them here with a bastion and tiara in play count from familiar and I think playing Dina should get the job done. Zealot can also drain the opponents. False Scourge attacks, drains the opponent with Dina. Ayara also triggers Dina. So an attack with Volt Scourge is enough. And then we can still use Ayara and some speed if needed. Opponent is going to Doomblade their own creature, respond by sacking, I guess, a Dusk Legion Zealots, which triggers Bastion, triggers Dina, and that's also game over. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Catilda, so green-white humans. My hand does feature Exquisite Blood for the combo. But we're a bit land light, Monument doesn't help cast the Exquisite Blood or the Reclamation. So yeah, two five drops with only two lands is probably a little too sketchy when we don't even have green mana. Despite the Phyrexian Tower maybe making an extra mana. So it's actually close. Yeah, maybe on the draw we can actually try this. But relying a lot on Phyrexian Tower for the extra mana. Alright, Forest is good. So turn two can play a Doomed the center, and then we probably want to play Exquisite Blood before Dina, since it's easier to destroy creatures than enchantments in green-white. Although, maybe it's pretty close actually, since Exile Removal can maybe deal with both. But yeah, maybe better to protect our commander still. So turn to Doom the Center seems fine. Don't need to show them Phyrexian Tower just yet. Opponent does already have access to 5 mana, thanks to the two humans tapping for mana. So our opponent's off to a good start. Sarath to protect the team, that's fine. And Ayara, I could technically cast if I sack Doom to the Center. Maybe playing Ayara still the play here because it does help me draw cards. Also, I do have to sack a creature in order to cast her. But I think it's worth it since the other cards aren't too helpful. I guess Brushstroke making a blood token can loot to draw card as well. So maybe that's the play. And then I can sank the blood token end of turn, maybe get rid of a reclamation, which seems a little slow. And then try and ramp into this exquisite blood. Intrepid adversary to pump the team can apply a lot of pressure. So that's two counters giving the team plus two plus two. And we'll sank the blood token. Land is good. And another land. Alright, so I can already play Exquisite Blood here. And then hope they don't have an answer to it. And if it's an enchantment removal spell, Rex Age can still blow it up. Seems good. So big turn coming up. Opponent's gonna smash, I'll take it. Instant speed removal on Dina could potentially interfere. 
I don't know if there's a way for me to beat instant speed removal with my current mana situation. Can play Ayara into Dina, which would then trigger Ayara and kickstart the combo. But I would have to sacrifice Blood Artist in the process, so there's no way for me to maybe keep up a sacrifice with Blood Artist in play to respond to removal to still combo and response. So yeah, let's just go for it here. Play Dina and hope this works. Alright, we're comboing off and it doesn't seem like her opponent has any response. So maybe they had some protection for their own creatures. Sweet, so yeah, that's the power of Exquisite Blood plus Dina. And a Grim Tutor to help find it as well. Alright, sweet. So we get to see Exquisite Blood in action. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Surin, Imperious Bloodlord, Vampire Tribal. This hand doesn't quite seem good enough. This is better. So for now, I think I'm playing Mauling Tapped. Cemetery currently also comes into play tapped, but there's a chance we can play it untapped later and then for now I can play a fountain plus a tap land I guess over Dina especially if I'm gonna meet hook massacre I don't want to play creatures that die to it turn to carrier thrall and swamp is not a bad draw just gonna play Frexen arena to start drawing maybe let the opponent overextend into meat hook massacre Ayara. Not a vampire, but still a good card in a mono black deck. And Fountain offsets Phyrexian Arena for us nicely. Binding could destroy Ayara. Although there's still the Meat Hook Massacre we can play with, so maybe I just play Solemn here. Get a forest. And then next turn we can meet hook for quite a bit. Opponent attacks, in which case might be happy to trade. It does give the opponent a mana boost to potentially play a 5 drop. But we might still be able to sweep it away. Ooh, a Frexen Obliterator. I'll need one more mana to kill that, but I can also Binding it. So this turn maybe Binding Obliterator, play a Guild Gates. Or I can just play Dina as well, but I think the plan is still to Meat Hook Massacre at some points. And then I can Cling to Dust as well if needed. Although, probably don't want to get rid of a creature right now. Would rather draw a card with it. Their opponent hasn't played their commander yet. So they seem more like a mono black good stuff deck as opposed to vampire tribal. And the bastion's gonna offset my meat hook massacre. Binding would have been a nice answer to it. I'll just uh, hang on to cling to dust for now. And then can find one of our dual lands, might as well get the tapped one. So I can meat hook for three. And then 
I can still play Dina if I wanted to, or Oven plus Keep Up Cling to Dust. Probably don't want to play Dina into potential removal when we can keep up dispute later. So I'll go with Oven. Alright, so we've got some nice enchantments and artifacts in place. Just waiting for some sacrifice fodder to combo with them. Scavenger could potentially be a problem. Still only creatures in the graveyard. So I think I hang on to cling to dust still. There's my reassembling skeleton, that's good. So I could play, let's see, Yawgmoth, Dina, Skeleton, keep up Cling to Dust, maybe even Deadly Dispute. Uh, if I keep up Phyrexian Tower, Cling to Dust should be enough. And pass it back. Chupacabra, we'll see what it targets. Yogmoth. So I can sacrifice Skeleton with Yogmoth, target Scavenger, and then sag Yogmoth to my Witch's Oven. And get two food tokens because it had toughness of four. And given that we're falling pretty low on life, might be okay with uh, cling to dust here, just to gain some life. Blood Mage and ooh, Baladros Wither Bloom. That's an exciting draw. So play Baladros, still leaves me with quite a bit of mana. And then can bring back Resembling Skeleton. Maybe sack some food tokens. Could also pay 10 to untap all my lands. Which could be reasonable. Given that I have a Deadly Dispute to draw more and a Callous Blood Mage, so sure, why not? So bring back Skeleton, sacrifice it to Dispute. See what we draw. Mortality Spear can destroy maybe the Bastion, which could be scarier than Scavenger. Although both are threatening. Blood Mage could draw a card or make a Pests. Um, I guess we'll get more Pests from Belladros, so let's draw. Could also exile my own graveyards. To shrink down the scavenger, I guess escaping cling to dust is one way to do it. So, yeah, let's mortality spear the bastion. And then I can bring back skeleton at instant speed, cling to dust I could escape, or I can just sacrifice a couple food tokens, so this seems fine. Veto, okay. Is scary with the scavenger in play. That attacks. So don't really want to block with Belladros. So first let's figure out if we can survive. So I can cast Cling to Dust out of the graveyard by escaping it. Use my treasure, keep up Phyrexian Tower. So I can cast Cling to Dusts. 
and then one, two, three, four, five. And then I could even bring back Reassembling Skeleton, sacrificing my pests. Shrinks down Scavenger to a 1 2. And then we'll take the 1. So we're still at 7. Can still sack something to the witch's oven. Make more food. Translates into more damage with Dina, maybe more mana with Belladros. And then our opponent concedes. Too many value engines in play here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Cody, Vociferous, Codex. And my hands, okay, a little bit light on sacrifice fodder. I can expect our opponent's deck to be quite controlling, but we do have multiple answers to Cody at least, so I'll try it. And then we'll scry towards some sacrifice fodder. Spider Queen's difficult to turn down. So I'll keep that. And then turn two, play priests. Hope they don't play turn three, Cody, since I wouldn't be able to necessarily destroy it. If they kill the priest, I'm not too upset. Opponent's going to go with Inquisition, which actually misses here. Which is unlikely for our deck, but so it goes. And our opponent foretells. Alright, so that worked out for us. Can play a Morbid Opportunist if I want to. Although I might be unable to curve 4-drop into 5-drop, which could be more important. But I guess Opportunist for now is the play. Their opponent's probably going to wait to play Cody until they can protect it with a counter spell. No, never mind. They could have, like, the uh, one mana black instant to save a creature. Yeah, I can play Vraska minus. That seems reasonable because it also develops a planeswalker. As opposed to using Mortality Spear, which we can maybe use on the cheap later. No response. Oh, quiet. Get to draw. And next turn we get to play Spider Queen, which also plays very well with Priest. Currently we have Vraska that can gain life to maybe synergize with Dina and Mortality Spear. Not too many other life gain synergies. And given that our opponent's playing five colors, it's difficult to figure out what the foretold card may be. Exquisite Blood. Okay, that opens up the combo potential. Spider Queen seems likely to get countered, but if they counter Spider Queen they may not counter Exquisite Blood. So that might be okay. So I guess we'll start here. So Spider Queen picks up more loyalty when we sack Priest to Vraska. Right, Jory Disruption is painful, but we'll uh, attack for two and then probably plus Vraska. Could also sacrifice a land, although being able to maybe double spell and surprise the opponent with Exquisite Blood Dina could be worth it. So I'll sag the Priest, which also draws with the Opportunist. And now Vraska could minus to destroy Cody once again. Although Baleful Mastery is going to exile Vraska and give us a card in return. Vito can also combo with Exquisite Blood, so we've got a bit of redundancy. 
Serpentine Curve makes a 4-4, that's okay. I did draw Phyrexian Tower. Now once we play Dina, Exquisite Blood, I still need a way to damage my opponent to kind of kickstart the combo. So playing Exquisite Blood by itself may not be enough. Although we do have a Jungle Hollow, interestingly, so that can gain a life, trigger Dina to start comboing. But if I play Jungle over Frankston Tower, I don't have enough mana. So I could try and play Exquisite Blood here. And hope uh, they don't have a removal spell for it. And then next turn we can go for the play of Dina. Plus Jungle Hollow, maybe even a Veto as well. So we've got two ways to combo off. Just need them not to destroy my enchantment. Take four. And there's Cody. Alright, so it looks like the coast is clear. So we can play Dina, play Vito, play Jungle Hollow, and Prophets. And a single Lightning Bolt's not gonna save them here. And our opponent explodes, awesome, so the combo gets there once again, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Scarab God, blue-black control. Liliana would be nice to eventually resolve, although probably gets countered. I do like Bontus Monument with Skeleton, but we have to watch out for Scarab God turning Skeleton into a zombie, but we should be able to manage, so I'll try it. And interestingly, I could keep Jungle Holo to get an extra damage out of Dina. With this hand, I envision it's probably better to just get the tap land out of the way. So Supplier to maybe put some expensive creatures in their graveyard to then reanimate. And then turn two, it's tempting to play Dina. So then I can go Monument into some creatures to trigger Monument and trigger Dina as well. Although she may get removed. At least Monument makes it cheaper to replay her. And our opponent's tapped out for the legendary artifact. So next turn could go for Dina plus Skeleton. So our opponent does seem to have lots of zombie synergy to go with the ability on Scarab God. Mortality Spear will be a nice answer for it. And uh, yeah, I think we'll stick to Dina plus Skeleton. And uh, can even block the Headless Rider. And then Spear we can play for two mana if we play Creature to trigger Monument first. Slowly builds up our mana to get to Liliana. Don't think Headless Rider is a must kill on sight, but of course still quite powerful. Ooh, and a Crippling Fear will be a one sided sweeper here. That's unfortunate. Could have left Dina in the graveyard to Awakening back, but I might have to play Awakening just to um, get up to six for Liliana. Now we could Vraska Specimen as a blocker for Supplier to protect Vraska once we kill Headless Rider. Although I guess never mind, our opponent does get a 2-2 zombie from the Rider dying as well. So maybe then I'm better off plussing Vraska instead to hit my land drops and maybe get to Liliana. Alright, so next turn I can Lily minus four. Although that still leaves those zombie tokens behind. And I guess Faceless Saving can finish off Raska. So yeah, we may want to take a turn killing 
Headless Rider first. Blood Artist, not bad. Or I can just give up Liliana, kill those two creatures. Faceless Haven makes it difficult to keep Liliana in play. Although I could once again just Liliana plus. And then... It's unlikely that they have removal and can turn on Faceless Haven. So I'll try that instead. And if we can untap with Liliana, we could have a great turn next turn. So is it time for Scarab God? Nope, Infernal Grasp. Alright, so they actually had 2 mana removal plus Faceless Haven. So my Liliana dies. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We do have a Bolas of Citadel, however. It's always powerful. Play land of the top. I'll gladly pay one life for the Squirrel. And then now we've got a powerful card engine that's much more difficult for the opponent to interact with. So let's hope this plan works out. Monuments can offset the life loss from Citadel. Opponent finally forced to play Scarab God. But we can deal with it. Lands off the top. Another land on top is too bad, although I could draw with the Ravenous Squirrel. So how about we play Blood Artists. Get back Skeleton. Sacrifice Skeleton to the Squirrel. And then we can still Mortality Spear the Scarab God. Hope there's more spells on top. Heartless Act will do. So maybe this kills the Scarab God instead. It's not a zombie, so they don't get a zombie token. And then... I could still Mortality Spear the Headless Rider here. Seems okay. And pass it back. So they can replay Scarab God, but next turn we can untap with a ton of mana, a Bolas of Citadel, and just combo off. And our opponent's seen enough, so despite a pretty rough start, and our opponent being able to deal with our two Planeswalkers, our deck still got the job done. So yeah, this Dina Sacrifice deck has combo potential, like we could see with the Exquisite Blood combo, but it can also play very grindy games against more controlling strategies, and against fair creature decks, being able to just chum block with our small sacrifice fodder and still get value while draining the opponent to death is not a bad strategy either. So it's got most angles covered, making it a fun deck that's uh, quite versatile in a lot of different scenarios. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.